this video, I'm going to show you how to carry out GC alternative to physics practical. Man, this first series is going to be on mechanics, Archimedes principle, which is used to determine the relative density of an unknown liquid. So join me as we go through the question and see how we carry out this out. This uh, setup would have been the setup we used to perform the experiment. But here we are not performing that experiment. So I'll just quickly run through uh, what we have to do. Now they, you know that this is an alternative to practical. So let's read through this. An object of mass. So reading through this will just give you an idea of what all of this is. An object of mass M is hung on the spring balance. The pointer position X of the balance is read and weight W1 of the object in A is determined. So this is the balance point. So this mass is hung on this spring balance in A. So we determine the weight W1. We we'll just read it from here. That's what we are supposed to do, but we are not doing that because it's alternative to a practical. The object is then gradually immersed in a water contained in the beaker as shown in the diagram above this. The pointer position Y of the balance is red and the weight W2 of the object is in water is determined. So look at the now look at what we are going to determine X, Y, W1, W2. The object is again immersed in another liquid containing a beaker marked L. The setup is going to be like this, but this time around we don't we remove the water, we we'll put a, a liquid that we're going to label it S. As we are performing the experiment in the laboratory, but this remember that we are not performing the experiment anyway. So the pointer position Z. Now you see that we have a third parameter which is Z, but the balance is red and the weight W3 of the object in the liquid is determined. So the, we have W3 again. So we have X, Y, Z. W1, W2, W3. X, Y, and Z are the position of the spring balance. Then W1, W2, W3 are the weight of the object when they are in air, water, and in liquid. All these are secondary anyway because we're just going to look at how we're going to determine W, X, Y, Z, W1, W2, and W3. So the whole procedure is repeated for five other values of mass. In each case, the corresponding value of W1, W2, and W3 are determined from the corresponding pointer position X, Y, Z of the balance. Figure A, figure A is on the other side, I'll show you that. A, B, and C show the pointer position X, I, Y, I, Z, I for the masses M, I in air, water, and the liquid, and L respe respectively. When I is for the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, respectively. All this means that we have X1, S2, S3, to X is the same for this, this, and the masses. So we have to measure and record the pointer position X, Y, and Z. See, so you have to measure this, record it, then to determine the corresponding values of W1, W2, and W3. So we have to record this again, then in each case, evaluate U equals W1 minus W2. And V equals W1 minus W2. Now I'm going to show you a table of how we are going to have two tables. So one of the tables is going to have X, Y, and Z. The other table is going to have W1, W2, W3, U, and V. Let me just show you those tables now. Now I like to do write out the parameters as we go forward so that when you are now carrying out the measurement and the experiment, you will not be able, you will not be coming back to. So, now look at these are the tables that I've created. Then we have six values of we are going to have six values for X, Y and Z. Then we are going to get their corresponding weight W1, W2, W3. Then we now evaluate U and V. Now let us uh, get the measurements proper. So this represents the measurement of X, Y and Z. Take note of the always take note of the zero mark. This is the zero mark, and these are the zero marks, and these are the zero marks. So I'm going to take the measurement, I'm going to take the position from this, 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 this for x and this for x1, s2, s3, s4, s5, s6. The same for y and the same for z. So I'm going to place this here. 
I'm going to place this on the on my meter rule. Uh, about my on my drawing paper, and I'm going to have this. Let's say take a fist any fist point. My ruler does not have an origin zero uh, zero, so I have to take any fist point as my origin. So if I'm taking so here I'm taking seventeen as my origin, so I can measure this as this is one two. So that's 2.0 cm. So I'm going to record that down. So the next one, so I have one, two, three, four. So that's four cm. Next, I go to the third one. So I have one, two, three, four, five, five point five. 0.1, 0.2, For the next one, I go to X4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7.5, 0.6, So for the fifth one, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 5.8. And for the last one, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 11.9. Okay, next, let's go to the next one. So I'm going to fix a point for this again. Okay. So I'm going to measure this is going to be. So this is 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. One, this is 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So that's 1.4. I'm going to record that down also. Now, I believe that we already have the idea of how to take the position. So let me pause the video and take the reading for this and this. Then I'll show us how to convert them to uh, W1, W2, and W3. So here we have the recorded values for X, Y, and Z. Now the next thing we have to do is to be able to convert these values here for the values for x y and z to w1 w2 w3 so x is going to represent w1 s is going to represent w1 the values of y are going to be converted to w2 the values of z are going to be converted to w3 but there's something very important like i said earlier on is this this is the what is going to be very important this value this scale here so our scale factor is 1 cm our scale factor is 1 cm is equal to 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 newton. And this is just the same as 1 cm is equal to 0 0.02 newton. So what that means is that to convert all of these to newton, you're going to multiply these values here by 0 0.02. So let me do the first part of it. So I'm going to have a 2 times 0 0.02. That's going to give me 0 0.04. So I'll record that here 0 0.04. So I'll go with all of this four zero. Record this to three decimal places. Then I'll go with this again. So let me pause it and fill all of that. Then I'll come back to look at how to plot the graph. So these are my recorded values for W1. Then for W2, I'm going to multiply this 1.4 times 0. 0, 02 again so i'll fill out of that again then we'll do the same with this w2 again then we'll evaluate so these are my corresponding values for w1 w2 and w2 next what we have to do is to evaluate u so u is going to be w1 minus w2 and v is equal to w1 minus w2 so i'm going to work all this out and put them on the table before we plot the graph so these are my evaluated values for u and v. Please take note that you can see that I created a table for x, y, and z because it was 
stated in the question. So you have to state, uh, write down these values. You have to take this measurement down. Then you now convert them based on the scale that you are given. This is the scale that we are given. And I have used that scale to convert all of this to this. Now, the next we have to do is to look at the remaining part of the question and see what they ask us to do, to plot a graph and what uh, what else. So here, okay, we have tabulated our readings. Okay, the next is to plot a graph of V equals W1 minus W on the vertical axis against U equals W1 minus W2 on the horizontal axis. Determine the slope S of the graph. What physical quantity? does the slope s of the graph represent this is not quality it's quantity and it is very important in fact the experiment is on archimedes principle you already know that so because it is on archimedes principle you know that you can use the archimedes principle to determine relative density so we already know that the physical quantity that the slope is all about is relative density we are going to uh, give the answers to that then yeah we have to state precautions and we have some other uh, theoretical questions that are added to this and the calculation this time we can uh, find a way to um, work these examples out so let's plot the graph quickly okay now let's uh, plot the points now in plotting the point there's something i need to help you to do to understand this better now if you look at these values you see that they are very small values now, what I normally do is this. I'm going to write these numbers in powers of 10. What do I mean by that? If I write this, not the standard form anyway, so I can move this 1, 2, 3. See that I'm going to have 12. You can look for somewhere just to write this one. Then you don't need to write this, or you can even show it on your working table. So I'm going to have 12 times 10 raised to power minus 3 Newton for this. Then for this, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to have 16 times 10 raised to power minus 3. For this, I'm going to have 22 times 10 raised to power minus 3. This, I'm going to have 30 times 10 raised to power minus 3. This, I'm going to have uh, 38 times 10 raised to power minus 3. For this, I'm going to have 50 times 10 raised to power minus 3. Then if you come to this, when I move this 1, 2, 3, I'm going to have 4 times 10 raised to power minus 3. Here I'm going to have 14 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. Here I'm going to have 8 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. Here I'm going to have 14 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. Here I'm going to have 18 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. Here I'm going to have 24 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. Now the essence of doing this is this. If I want to draw on my graph, when I want to draw on my graph, instead of writing, looking for a way to fix these smaller numbers, I'll fix these whole numbers here. And I will express all of them as a power of what? Uh, 10 raised to the power minus 3. Same with this. Now, this is what I have done. Now, on my graph, this is my zero mark. Now, you see that I have 10 here. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Now, remember that on this, the, lower, the highest value should be 50 and the lowest is 12. So, that's how I decided to take this. And here, I am clearly using 2CM to 10 times 10 raised to 1 minus 3 what newton you see that i have expressed it here that all these values are expressed as 10 raised to the power minus 3 then i did the same thing for this v times 10 raised to the power minus 3 <laughs> newton next the next thing you need to know is that when plotting graph you must ensure that you must try as much as possible to use the full almost the full width of your graph paper see what i've done here i started from this point i started it to this point because that would be enough for me to fit all the values into it now let's look at this from 12 to 50 so what i've done here is 0 to 50 you see that i started it beyond 50 to 60 to 70 and for this I have from 4 to 24. And see what I have done here. 0, 10, 20, 30. So I started it to 30. Now, I have taken an appropriate scale that will help me. So from this, you can see that on the vertical axis, my scale is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 4, uh, four 8. This is 2 cm, 4 cm, 6 cm, 8 cm. So it means that 8 cm 
represent 10 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 what? Newton. So I'm going to write it here. Let's say vertical as is. So I have an 8 cm to 10 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 Newton. Then on the horizontal axis, or U axis, this is vertical or V axis, on the or U axis, I have this is 2 cm to 10 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 units. So you see that here, horizontal axis. So that is my scale there. And then next, I have to put, now that I'm done with the scale. Have to put the title of the graph so my title of the graph is going to be graph of v in newton against u in newton so this is the title of my graph now the next one have to do is to plot the point now instead of using this i'm going to be using this or you can even read this directly from here so now let's see here you see that i'm going to be plotting 12 on the horizontal axis against 4 on the vertical axis. then after you have done this you need to be able to determine the 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 size of each of these smaller lines it's very easy now look at it this is 10 20 30 40 and the size of this is 10 so you divide 10 by 40 that's going to give you 0 0.25 so if one of these lines is 0 0.5 you remember that if you multiply 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 is just 0 0.25 is just 1 over 4. So if I multiply this by 4, I'm going to have 1. So it means that if I count 4 of these lines, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 of them is going to give me what? 1. So by the time I count it, I have what? 2, and so on and so forth. Then for this, it is pretty uh, very simple. This is 10, and the value I have there is 10. So 10 divided by 10 is 1. So each of these lines are 1 each. So if I want to plot... 12 against 4. You see how easy it is going to be for me. So this is 10, 11, 12. 4. For me to get 4, I'm going to multiply. Remember I said this. 1. To get 1, you have 4 lines. 4 lines is going to give you 1. So for me to get 4, I have to multiply 4 by 4, making 16. So it means that from here, I'm going to move 16 places up. Or that, that's going to give me 4. So this is my 12. So this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this gives me 4. So this is 4. You get that? So the next one I'm going to have 16 for 14. So let's read off 16 from here. So this is 10, 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So now we have to read 14 of these. Remember, one of the line is one of the line is 4. So 4 times 14. So that gives me 56. So from 16, I'm going to move 56. It's very simple. Just count this. This is 10. I'm moving 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, and when I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this gives me 14. Now you can see that it is close to 10 here. That's, that's 14. As easy as that. Then let's go to the next one. 22 for 18. So I'll easily get 22 here. This is 20. 21, 22, just mark here. Then we we'll go for what? 8. So that'll be 8 times. 8 times 4. That's 32. So I'm going to 32 places. This is 10, 20, 20, 30, 31, 32. So I put a dot here. And circle it. Next, we are going for. Okay. We have plotted 3.30. For 14, so we are going the same place. So this is 30. So I'm going to 14. Remember, this was 14. So I'll just move through this on the same point here. Just put a dot here and put this like this. Very easy. Next, we we'll go for 38. So I can read 38 off here. This is 30, 31, 32, 33, 
31, 32, church, 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 4, 35, 36, 37, 38. So let me just mark it here. Then we'll go for 38, 18. So that'll be 18 times 4. That's going to give me 72 places. So I'm moving 72 places from here. This is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 71, 72. So I put a dot on this and circle it. Next, one, two, three, four. We already have five spots. So this is 50 for what? 24. So this is 50 here. We can just read this off. Then 24, that's going to be 24 times 4. That's going to be 96. So I'm going 96 places from here. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. So I put a dot here and i'll draw a circle next is to find the line of best fit obviously you can see that this is far way off let's see if we can fit four of this four of this into into one and and so we have one of them down this way the other one up there so i am thinking that we can easily fit it through this now this is the essence of making your graph to be very large once it is large you'll be able to plot your line of best fit better you see this one is already out this one is out so you just draw a straight line through this it's not compulsory it's going to pass through the centers of those lines but if it is possible for you to draw it through them draw it but if not just look for the best fit that you can draw it through so i'll draw it through this to any length Wow, that's good. Now the next thing we have to do is to, so this is what I've done from here, I drew to any point, is to draw a large triangle across this any convenient point of yours, of you wish to. So let me make use of this. I think I can make use of this, this point. I want to make use of this point, so I'll draw through this. The essence of stretching your graph is to allow for you to get a better line of best. If, assuming this was close together, this point here will be closer to this line, and you have difficulties drawing your line of best fit. Now you see that this just this line separates this this way, and this one this way. So I'm going to join it to this point. Wow. So this is theta v and this is delta u now i'm going to read off this so let me just uh work my slope here my slope s is equal to so let's read off this top point here read it this way it's very simple now this is what you're going to do if you count from here downward this is 20 so this is going to be or rather let's count this this is 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 this is 90 and this is going to be 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. So what you're going to do now is you are going to divide 97 by 4. So that I'm having 24.25. So when you divide, now just look at what I have just done. Remember that when we're counting out the point, we said that each of the line is 4. Each 4 lines like this, 1, 2, 3, 4 is 1. So when you count this from 0... This is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. So when you divide down 97 by the 4, it means that you're going to get the actual value on this point. So that, that's gives, that gives me 24.25 minus, and I'm going to read this off. So this is a... 20 divided by 4. That's 5. In fact, it's midway between this. You can see now this is 10, 20 divided by 4. It's going to give the value of this. Now you can see that this is the midpoint between 0 and 10, which is what? 5. Look at this. This point here. This is halfway, halfway. So it's 5. But if you use the approach 10, 20 divided by, use the approach, this is 0, 10, 20 
divide it by 4, it's still going to give you what? 5. So minus 5 divided by, so you can read this off. So this is 50. And don't forget that here we have times 10 raised to the power minus 3. It is very important. Remember that these values are, are not the real values, but we are multiplying them by 10 raised to the power minus 3. So you have to include them in the bracket times 10 raised to the power minus 3 new thing. Put, include the unit so that you'll be able to work out the unit divided by so this is 50 minus so we can read off this point downward this is actually this is 10 11 12 13 minus 13 this is 10 11 12 13 so that's 13 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 newton remember that we have times 10 raised to the power minus 3 here so we can just easily cancel add this this and this so we are left with this so i have 24.5 minus 5 that gives me 19.25 divided by 50 minus 13 and that is equal to 37 so 19 19.25 divided by 37 is equal to 0 0.52 0 0.52 what this slope means is that the relative density of that liquid is close to 0 0.52 so like i said earlier the implication of of the slope so the physical quantity the slope represent is the relative density of liquid air and we also ask to state three precautions you can state precautions such as i will ensure that the object does not touch the bottom or sides of the beaker so the mass should not touch the object or side of the beaker that's one precaution two i would ensure that the mass is cleaned before slipping it inside the liquid. Three, I would ensure that the zero error of the spring balance is noted. Because you know, if you are doing the experiment, you have to use the spring balance. So you ensure that the zero error is noted. Again, the fourth one, you can, you must ensure that you have avoided error due to parallax when taking readings from the spring balance. I think that will be all for this uh, lesson. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. See you some other time.